Hello everyone! Welcome to my channel. My name is Jojo and this is Jojo Budgets. Thank you for stopping by. For those of you who are new, welcome. Today's video we are going to be doing a paycheck number one budget for the month of August. Just to give you a little background, I am married. We are a two income household. We have three kids. My husband and I are new to budgeting as of September of last year. We began our debt free journey in February of this year. We are paycheck by paycheck, zero based budgeters. So I'm going to show you guys how I do that process using sheets that I have created. Um, all of the sheets you see me use on my channel are available on my Etsy shop. I'll leave the link in the description box below if you feel like they would be helpful for you. I'll get you switched over to the calendar view and we'll go ahead and get started. Alright, so here we are at the August calendar. I did a video a couple weeks ago where I did a paycheck budget forecast for paycheck number three. Um, we did end up with three paychecks in the month of July, which was super fun. Um, I'm budgeting today for paychecks that are going to be direct deposited on Thursday and Friday. Next week, I like to do my forecast a week in advance so that I can assign every dollar a job before the money hits the bank account like Dave Ramsey teaches. Um, I did fill this out. Um, these are calendars I'm repurposing from a household calendar, but I did fill out my paydays with my sloppy handwriting like early, early this year before I started really using these like you see me using them now. Um, so, I mean, it's in there. It's not as cute as my handwriting here. I'm trying to focus on my handwriting, but you know, I guess that's neither here nor there. So we're just gonna work with what we have, but I like to use the highlighter system like the Budget Mom teaches. And I start with my calendar view. It just gives me a nice visual of where the money and the paychecks fall so I can assign things. And I'm very much a visual person so I love being able to use this. And my checkbox sections, when you see me do my weekly check-ins, I have a transaction log that I do. And as I'm filling out the transaction log, when the bills or the fixed expenses come through, I come and check them off on my calendar. And that way, before I dive into updating my paycheck budget sheet with the actual numbers, I can see if there's a bill that came in unexpectedly or a bill that has not come out when I was expecting it to come out and I can act on it immediately. Um, so yeah, everything has been highlighted. I'm choosing purple for this paycheck. Oops, and I just decided, I guess, to not finish highlighting. But for paycheck number one, it's gonna be covering all of the bills and fixed expenses from August 14th until August 27th when paycheck number two gets deposited. Okay, so that takes care of my paycheck budget. Um, calendar, setting that up, we'll now get over to the budget sheet. Okay, here we are at the paycheck budget sheet. I'm going to be coordinating my pen to my highlighter color and purple, which is my favorite color, if any of you were curious. Um, I'm using these Papermate felt tip um, flare pens and they are amazing. I'm really, really glad that I got these. Um, so this is going to be for paycheck number one. The dates, as I've mentioned, that it is going to be covering are going to be from August 14th to August 27th. And the first table here is income. And I do always underestimate income. I would definitely recommend doing that and overestimating expenses to give yourself a cushion. See, and since we are starting into the month of August, um, I have mentioned to you guys before that I have a word of the month that I like to like to be mindful of or to kind of keep me focused intentional um, so I the the word that I am going to be using is grace to give myself some grace because I feel like I'm especially on the debt-free journey it's hard to not do negative self-talk and 
get down on yourself, especially, you know, when maybe you didn't do as well as you were hoping. But instead of focusing on failures, you know, what, what went well? What did you do well? And then also even with, um, you know, like this whole year with the pandemic and everything, it's been so stressful and tensions have been high. We've all been stuck in a house together where we maybe could be more patient or um, things like that. It's, you know, we might find ourselves lashing out at the ones that we love and then doing negative self-talk. And um, so I'm just trying to keep myself mindful, you know, like what, what has been going well. And I do, I practice yoga and that's kind of where this came from. I, um, when we do our yoga sessions, my instructor, you know, will tell us to have a word or an intention while we're on the mat. And it's, you know, cause breathing and stuff during yoga is so important. So while we're doing our breathing, as you inhale slowly and meditate, you're inhaling your positive intention, positive word, and then slowly exhaling the antithesis of that word. And it helps you to clear your mind, to be settled. And I, I thought that was so amazing. It was so helpful. Like I, you know, we all have different stressors in our lives and I, um, Pretty much instead of going to see a therapist, I started going to yoga so I could connect my mind and my body and my spirit, and it was just life-changing. So to carry that, not it's not just a workout class for me, it's um, carried over into my life as well. So I'll use it at work when I'm stressed, at home with my kids, in traffic, when someone cuts me off, you know, my yoga breathing, focusing on my intention, um, inhaling the positive, exhaling the negative, and clearing my mind. Um, but I just wanted to share that with you guys. So my word or intention going into August is grace, to give myself some grace. Um, now we're gonna move over to fixed expenses. And this is where I use my calendar right here. And then I also have this bills card that I put together just on a little index card and it has the expected amounts for all of my bills and I use these two to help me plug in my numbers to my paycheck budget sheet. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera just for the sake of saving time. All right and I'm back. Everything has been filled out. Um, for those of you who have been following, um, you know, the never-ending moving target of childcare during this pandemic. So we've been using a babysitter for my daughter. Um, she's going into second grade this year, and her summer program was not really open when we would need it to be, and it was kind of um, not consistently open, so we ended up having a babysitter. But now, starting on August 17th, the kids are going to be going back to school. My um, oldest is going into high school. They're doing more of a hybrid. We really haven't heard much yet about that, but my daughter, for she's in elementary school. They're going to be going Monday through Friday, and I cannot tell you guys how grateful I am that that is an option we have in our state. I've been watching other families and heard stories, you know, of other families when you're um, full-time a single parent or you're married and you're both working full-time and trying to afford um, good child care and make sure your kids are learning and able to get on with the meetings and meet with their teacher and their classmates and the socialization and it's just it's it's a lot you know um, there's a lot of stressors and that's again where that um, giving ourselves some grace because a lot of you I know are wearing multiple hats and you know you're doing the best that you can and that's really all that you can do so uh, make sure to give yourself some grace as well because you know you are doing a, a great job um, and I just wanted you all to know that my heart goes out to you and I think you guys are amazing but I and I am just so grateful that my kids are going back to school um, and we'll see how it plays out I mean that's nothing's really promised at this point but um, 
my son has his daycare and he's three and then my daughter for her before school program that now is opening up and um, she only needs to go really one day a week so we're trying to keep costs as low as possible with child care so it's just a drop in in the morning and then after school our babysitter meets her at the bus stop on Tuesdays and so um, and watches her until my husband gets home so that's ten dollars every Tuesday for that and so that's where you'll see these change with our child care and on my calendar I'd even had kind of this question mark because it's like who really knows this is the tentative plan um, and that's why doing these forecasts are so helpful because the things can change but I can kind of see it coming and where I can shift money if I need to. Um, Alright so our total fixed expenses for paycheck number one is going to be $517.74. Moving on to variable expenses for groceries to last us two weeks I budget $400. And we've really been doing well with that, which I'm super, super proud of us for that. Because, you know, feeding a teenage boy in a family of five, it's, it can be a lot. <laughs> but these, my weekly check-ins, that, oh my goodness, if you guys find you are struggling with staying on your grocery budget, do a weekly check-in. Because when you see um, the money that you have left over and meal planning too. Um, my husband and I came up with a system because we're, you know, we're not on the same schedule as far as our work schedule. So trying to communicate and when I'm working, he makes dinner. When he's working, I make dinner, that sort of thing. So we found a, um, a way to communicate with each other about the meals and um, compiling the grocery list and things like that. Um, so if you guys would like to see a video about that, um, let me know, leave a comment and uh, let me know if you want to see how we have tackled our monstrous grocery bill and got it under control. Um, okay, so next, um, we are zero-based budgeters, so paycheck number one, it gets completely rolled into paycheck number two. So when I come over here and I calculate the income, which is going to be this 44.54 minus our fixed expenses which as I mentioned was 517.74 and then our variable expenses which is always 915. We are going to be rolling over $3,021.26 into paycheck number two or at least that's what we are expecting to do. And it seems like a lot but just how the paychecks fell um, paycheck number one didn't end up covering some of our bigger expenses, which is our car payment and our mortgage. So paycheck number two is going to need all the help it can get from this rollover here. And when I do my paycheck number two budget in a couple weeks, you'll see under income, I circle rollover and then under expected, I'll write this um, $3,021.26. Next is the sinking funds table, and this is just how I keep track of any expenses from my sinking funds. I have a whole other um, table that I track all of the actual sinking funds and their categories, but when I make a purchase from a category, I track it here, and that's done during my weekly check-ins. Okay, and then down here is our debt table. I filled out kind of what I could. There's still some things trickling in, but um, these are all of the debts we started with. So far, we have been able to pay off four debts, which is so exciting. I just paid off my first student loan after having it for 17 years, and it feels so good. Next, we're gonna be tackling student loan number two, and it's in the 60,000s, guys. Um, so we're gonna be getting creative with that. Um, but paycheck number three, I'll pull that in over here, but um, under its fixed expenses, it had a lot of these debt bills. So you can see student loan number two, student loan number one, 
it had the car payment, it has our cell phone bill, which are um, obviously our payment on our cell phones is lumped into that. So all of that is waiting to be cleared with paycheck number three. And as those bills clear for that paycheck, I update this ending balance. And then um, paycheck number two is the, the workhorse for our debt repayment. That's where I calculate our cash flow and zero it out and throw all of the cash flow at our current debt focus. Um, but yeah, that is going to wrap up the paycheck number one budget forecast video for today. I'm going to be posting two videos next week. One is going to be my week six check-in for paycheck number three. Since that is an extra paycheck, it's getting zeroed out and the money that's left over is going to be thrown at our new debt focus. And then on Friday, I'm going to be talking to you guys about our new debt repayment plan since we are paying off a big debt, that student loan number two, $60,000 debt that's accruing interest. We kind of are trying to get creative with how we can save ourselves some money on interest and pay it down as soon as possible. So that'll be a video next Friday. If you guys like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you're enjoying the content of this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I will see you next week week.